I'm Liam Quarantine Ham. I'm George Fragopoulos. And I'm just going to go with Fragopoulos because it already sounds like some sort of terrible contagious disease. Oh, it's, t- yeah, it's, it's like, it's like yeah, I, have, I have Fragopoulos. I got a bad case of Fragopoulos. And, I, and this is a special quarantine dish of. You like where yeah. I'm going with this? Oofra Busters. We did a win. George. We did it. We survived day one of the quarantine. Quarantine. How are you doing? Quarantine ham. Uh, you know, we're hanging in there. I'm doing fine. How are you? I haven't lost Good. my mind. We're yet. over Wi Fi now, and it seems it's you haven't lost it, your I've mind? I've not yet? lost it, my mind yet. It sounds like you said lost I it. I didn't, but I'll, I'll go with it. Um, we, I'm, by the way, delivering these messages from the f- central CUNY bunker here in New York City. <laughs> I can't tell you exactly where the bunker is, I, but uh, it is deep below the city, below the subway systems, below where the mole people live, somewhere around there, around <laughs> Midtown. Are you at the Park Slope? Are you at the Park Slope Y? <laughs> uh, work, <laughs> like working out with Billy D. Me and Billy D are just fucking doing deadlifts. I gotta say though, for a man that big and that lanky, he surprisingly can um, bench press a good amount. I actually have worked out next to that guy like ten times. I have pictures. I should post them and? online. Um, he's fit as fuck. So we should talk. Not a good mayor. Not a good. What mayor. a great he's ass. Fit. He's fit as fuck. From all that working out. <laughs> So we thought it would be fun to uh, do a like a, a I don't know if it's a sick day episode, it's something. but kind of like a sick day episode. Yeah, I thought you. I thought we should also quickly maybe just define what a sick day film is. Well, I think there can be a couple different types of sick days. Why don't you tell me what a sick day time sick time sick day movie is for you? So my definition of a sick day film is it has to be a film that I've seen at least a dozen times. Or close to what does it, or feels like a dozen times. It is infinitely or feels infinitely rewatchable. And it's one of those films, obviously, because of one's familiarity with it, you could kind of jump in on it at any given time and just kind of feel like you can just be swept away in the narrative flow. Because obviously, also, when you're sick, typically, you're not kind of completely there, cognitively speaking. So the fam- familiarity with those kind of films are what makes them, to me, a sick day film. So it has to be a, a certain kind of comforting film. I agree with that. I also think depending on your sickness, you might want to do... I remember I was... Uh, this is a bunch of years ago, but I had a uh, a mental health day from work where I just didn't want to go into work, but I didn't necessarily want to shut my brain off. So I remember going to the Blockbuster in a store. Whoa, I remember on, that Blockbuster. On... 20th street maybe or no right on Dittmars. it was on Dittmars and renting both parts of steven soderbergh's che guevara film and watching amazing them. yeah it's a great film it was good so so i think it can also be movies that you want to tackle um when you have time or like it can be something that you ambitiously want to watch and it's it's hard to get six hours of time where you can be quiet and do that these yes. days so i think we can talk about both um so do you want to talk about your your sick day film, like a film that you would watch, the the film that you just described, what's your yes. pick? Yes, so I selected three, um, and I, I think I could well, maybe think of one or two more if you want to. I thought we know. agreed to five total. I thought we, I thought we agreed three, three, oh yes, five total, but th- two of those are films that I haven't seen yet. Oh, okay, okay cool, so cool, number cool, one, cool, cool, cool. Let's hear your, let's hear your Number three. one, mm-hmm. Goodfellas. Okay, never heard never of it. Heard it. Tell so me it's a film directed it. by, I think the guy's name is um, Marthaniel. Scor- Martha- Mark Daniel Scorsese. Okay, but yep, there, sure, there's, sure. Some, Good, there's yep. something about that film that I can fucking watch it. I could watch it at the drop of a dime, but I could also kind of pick up and watch it at any given moment. Yeah, I mean, that's a kind of a classic, very rewatchable, easy to jump into, and I feel like is a little more fun than The Godfather. That's fair. So, yeah, I think it's a little more fun to watch. I think it's a better movie. I like it more than The Godfather, personally. The other... The other interesting thing, too, is because you and I are just a little bit older um, than all these kind of digital streaming platforms is that I kind of grew up, you know, yes. like like turning on, let's say, like HBO, let's say on a random Tuesday if I were sick, jumping into a film like 20 minutes in and like just yeah. kind of obviously having to watch it from that point on. And I think that also kind of has changed my yeah. experience of some of these films as well. Like I probably have seen Goodfellas that way 
I'd say like a half dozen times, just like flipping through channels, finding it on something and being like, I'm just going to sit here and watch the last like 45 minutes of this. Yeah, totally. I think I think it's very rewatchable. And it is on Netflix right now, I think. It might be. So you can watch I've only been there. watching The Irishman on Netflix. So. My, my pick for a sick day movie is actually a movie I've only seen once. And it came out last year. And it is the Michael Bay 2019 film Six Underground. <laughs> You've mentioned this before. At least to me, I think we're on text. With Ryan Reynolds, Dave Franco, Melanie Laurent, and a few other actors. It's about a group of, I guess they're secret agents, who uh, try to take down dictators around the globe. And they're all uh, officially dead, so no one knows they're alive. This thing is like two hours long. The first 20 minutes is a car chase in Italy. It's totally insane and it has ADHD and it's completely rewatchable. And like Michael Bay drives me a little crazy and I think the Transformers movies are pretty terrible, but there's something so like ridiculously pure about the visuals in this movie that like the story doesn't matter. You can kind of start rewatching it anywhere. So like I would actually, if I could, would watch that movie today. I would watch Six Underground as my kind of like comfort food rewatch. I watched it on a train when I left New York a few months ago and it was like the perfect leaving New York City movie. I turned my brain off and I just watched a lot of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang Boom Boom. It was, it's great. It's so fun and so stupid and like, you know, has pretty bad uh, political opinions in a way but it is it's it's pretty it's pretty excellent to watch shocked that a michael bay film what else is on your list terrible politics yeah it's not as bad as some of the other the ones next uh film on my list is so i was having a time deciding between which indiana jones film i was gonna pick i'm gonna have to go with the third one indiana jones and the last crusade instead of raiders yeah the Lost see a hot, hot fucking take that's why Oof. people are downloading I don't these know, free dude. podcasts for my hot takes. I'm just, you know, I'm just fucking totally, totally enchanted by Sean Connery as the elder Mr. Jones. He's very good in it. He's very, very yeah. good. I like that movie a lot, actually. What's your favorite scene? My favorite scene might have to be the boat chase in Venice. Oh, that's but really, also the- really... Are you rubbing your feet together? Are you rubbing your... Are you making noise? I'm hearing like a... Uh, it's my, um, yeah. Um, don't, don't. Don't I'll do that. Do whatever the fuck you. I I fucking pay rent. Okay, I won't do that. Yeah, but also I think again. I mean the the last obviously kind of scene where he has to go through the the three fucking trials is pretty amazing as well. Yeah, it's pretty great. And the guy the the guy that plays the knight He's is so, so good, good in that sequence. I I love that movie. I think it's really good. I think one of my favorite moments is when they're tied up in the chair and he's <laughs> like uh, Sean Connery says over one shoulder, junior Indiana Jones turns and says what? Yeah. And then he says junior and they like, it's just so, so funny. And so it's, I feel like it's, I don't even really hate the kingdom of the crystal skull, but it's obviously not as good as the other ones, but it's oh man Raiders and, and last crusade are both so good. Yeah. It's funnier also, I think than Raiders. Which one? Last Crusade is Last funnier, Crusade? I think, than Raiders. Yeah, Raiders. Last Crusade. Actually, you know what's another really great moment in that is when <laughs> see <laughs> when he's like when he's like like hell you will. Brody's got a d- oh, day yeah. start on you. He knows he knows fifteen languages. A guide in every country. With any luck, he's got the Grail already. And then it smash cuts to him being like, "Does anyone speak ancient <laughs> Greek?" <laughs> see, see, see. So it's good. the money one. Um. My number two on the list is a movie that came out six years ago. It was my favorite movie of 2014. No one has seen it. Um, and it's it's not like a super enjoyable rewatch, but I think if, if there were justice in the world, we would be talking about it more than we do. And that is A Most Violent Year, oh, directed by yeah. J.C. Chandor. I've not seen it. And starring Oscar Isaac. And Yeah, no one's seen it. And Jessica Chastain. It's kind of, it takes place in 1981 in New York, which is the most, had the most homicides of, of any year in New York City history. And is about a fuel supplier trying to uh, sort of, deal with the moral complexity and corruption of his family and the business. It's so fucking good. And um, not enough people have seen it. And I highly recommend. I saw it and was just like, why isn't everybody talking about this movie? And I feel like it's the last really great Oscar Isaac performance because he sort of started to do some weaker stuff after that film with maybe the exception of ex machina and so I, I feel like we he had so much promise and then hopefully he'll be back but he kind of you know got 
trapped in Star Wars. I was about to say you, you haven't seen those Star Wars films he was in. Moving on, what's <laughs> which? Wait, what's your number serious three? question though. Was Inside Lewin Davis after that or before? I think it was a year before. Let me double check. Uh, Inside Lewin Davis is oh, that's so rewatchable. I love the shit out of that movie. Oh, it's so fucking good. Inside Lewin Davis was 2013. Yeah, that's on Hulu. And Eight Most Violent Year is on Netflix. And as is uh, Indiana Jones. All the Indiana Jones films are on Netflix. What's your gotta, number three? I got to check that out. My number three is another warm hug of a classic. It's Groundhog Day. Ooh, good. This is your best choice so far. This is your this best is my best choice, choice so far. Again, mm-hmm. infinitely rewatchable. Totally. Which obviously makes film make makes sense for what the film is about in a certain sense. But I could watch that film like two or three times a year and still find it enjoyable. Yeah, I think it's really, 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 really good. Um, Bill Murray's amazing in it. It's an underrated yeah. movie. I feel like it's really good. And I think Stephen. You think it's Tomalowski, underrated? Yeah, I think in some ways. I, I think just as a comedy, like no one puts it in a pantheon of great movies, and I think it's a genuinely great movie. It might be. Um, I'm, maybe it's too far to say. It's his best, but it's definitely top three. Ghostbusters is his best movie. Yeah. Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters. My number three is, um, so obviously this year everyone's been talking about Parasite, um, which is an amazing movie. But in 2018, South Korea released a movie called Burning, directed by Lee Chang Dong. Yes. Which, have you seen it? No, but I want to see it. So that's on. it's on Netflix as well, and it deals with a lot of the same issues of class that um parasite did and it's wrapped up in a thriller but it's a far more it's a i think it's a far less mainstream and i don't mean that critically of parasite it's just it doesn't have the kind of like pleasure center that i think parasite has it's a lot more um adventurous and and weird in the way the story's told and it's certainly not a better movie but it's it's an equally phenomenal movie that deserves a lot more attention than it gets so i've heard great things and on before. netflix yeah shahir dowd of the only movie movies the only podcast about movies loves this the only movie, podcast so i hope he listens to this the only podcast about movies good show what uh so then we had two movies on our list that we wanted to tackle now that we have yes. the time i actually have th- i actually have three you can uh, go you can put a third one down there i'm not gonna hold it against you okay Fucking so what is what are your God what are your damn it what are your choices for calm down don't what know are your choices fucking follow instructions so my first film talk about yes. an epic talk about an epic is a brighter summer day directed by edward yang Ooh, cool okay i've nice. only i've only seen taipei story and Yi Yi, and i've I not absolutely seen f- any of his films oh really oh my god Yi Yi is Yi Yi's not only one of the greatest films i've ever seen but it also does something that is really really difficult to do and that is that it has a precocious child in it, and you don't want to murder that kid. Mm. It actually just that works is, really well. That is a very hard thing to do. I so, Brighter Summer children. Day, it, it's like four hours long. It's an epic yeah. coming-of-age story. I really don't know much about it, other than the fact that it's very, very long, and it's made by this masterful director who not a lot of people talk about, but who has made some amazing, amazing films. Along with that, my choice, one of my choices is something that you and I both own, but I still haven't watched it, which is Rainier Werner Fassbender's Eight Hours Don't Make a Day, which Good call. came out last year, is like eight hours long, and was was commissioned by German television and is about a couple in the 70s in West Germany. Um, and it sort of was an attempt for... In a, in a much more way for Fassbender to talk about m- his Marxism and social reality in like a upbeat way um, than he initially had. And it, it just sounds really compelling. And I have the DVD here and I might, I might, it's also on the Criterion channel right now. So there, it's watchable there, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to digging into that. What's next on your list? Next on my list is Black Narcissus from 1947. Ooh. Ooh, isn't it Narcissus? Is it Narcissus? Narcissus? Sorry, did I say Narcissus? Narcissus. I Sorry. Narcissus. Directive, fucking Narcissus. Idiot. Narciss- fucking idiot. I'm not the pleb who hasn't fucking seen Yee Yee. All right, motherfucker. Okay, chill. Just, just uh, relax. That, direct- I have seen the opening shot of Yee Yee. Directed- that's pretty amazing. Directed by Michael Powell. And it's not as amazing as the opening dance sequence to Climax, though. It, it needs to be said. <laughs> garbage movie private joke between me and liam and our it's former guest host paul molinari such a uh, bad movie directed by michael powell and emmerich pressburger again don't really know much about this other than that it's a film about faith couldn't do a little research huh couldn't do a little research i know it's about nuns 
out somewhere, maybe trying to build a school or something. That sounds right. God, it is so noisy outside of your apartment. No, it's not. Stop. Stop. I can hear. They can literally hear cars. Liam, people are literally rioting in the streets, and you, <laughs> and you're worried about a few cars. Come on. No one's Come rioting on. yet. Yet. Um, I have two picks. Uh, one is to, both are by filmmakers um, whose films are new films are being slammed by the uh, by the coronavirus, which is really upsetting. They both released movies in the past week, and no one's going to see those movies. One is Kelly Reichardt, and uh, her new film is called First Cow, which I'm dying to see. Kelly Reichardt might be my favorite um, living filmmaker. And her debut film, Rivers of Grass, which is about a couple running from the law, and I've never seen it, and it's on Hulu. And I believe Larry Fessenden is in it, so I'm very excited to watch that. And the second one is Eliza Hittman, who um, just released her third feature which is called always rarely never sometimes i believe is the name of it um and uh, that's an abortion drama but she has a film called it felt like love which i've seen which is really great and she has another film on hulu that's on this is the one on my list called beach rats which is about a boy over the summer um in brooklyn trying to figure out uh figure out relationships and is about him sort of hooking up with women and men simultaneously. And she just makes really, really interesting coming of age films and is a great filmmaker. And I'm bummed that both she and Kelly Reichardt's films are going to um, be hurt by this fucking virus. Um, you know, there's, they're small, small scale problems in the big picture, but it would be a bummer if this affects their ability to make movies. Cause both Eliza Hittman and Kelly Reichardt make great movies. So there you go. Is first cow about the um the cow that uh, Nixon pardoned and then made part of his kind of like retinue? Did I shit all over your boring choices of Goodfellas and Indiana Jones? Huh? 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 Sorry, just by the it's just a it's just a great yes, but that's first cow. First cow. No, yeah, that's what it's about. It's about no, it's actually about the cow that Nixon was buried to. So. Yeah, that's that's uh those are my picks. Um I'm going to start digging into these soon. Um Nice. Yeah, yeah. I like your choices too. Uh, awesome. Can you uh we'll 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 post you we'll better. post the uh we'll post these in a list on the on the thing so you can check them out after and where you can find them. Um and we'll try to yeah, we'll uh we'll keep making episodes and we hope that everyone is um staying inside and not getting coronavirus. That's it. Yeah, and being Safe and sound. Safe and sound. All right, George. Uh, I'm Liam. Especially, hmm? especially you, Keith. Yeah, Keith. Be, Keith. If you don't, if you, Keith, if you, if you and P. Rinaldi catch coronavirus, then we won't be able to release. Then no one will listen to the show. Um, I'm Liam Billingham. I'm George Rogopoulos. And this was. You want to do oh, it? C- come on, I, with the lag. I don't. Uber Busters. It's Uber Busters. <laughs> it's Uber Busters. Stay safe. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.